Good morning and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. We're glad that you've joined us for worship today. It's a special and glad occasion this morning as we get to welcome our new pastor in training, Ms. Renee Behrens and her husband, Brian. They'll be here this morning. So we hope that you stick around after the service for coffee and some wonderful donuts. I don't know if you can see them uh, when you came in this morning. They're in the lobby here. We also invite you to come back if you haven't gotten your fill from donuts. We do hope that you'll come back for the brunch following the late service, so about 1045 or so. So make sure that you're hungry. So welcome Renee and Brian. We are glad to have you together with us, and we look forward to this new time together. Please take uh, just a moment now to turn inside the front red cover of the hymnal, and rising, let us face the cross at the back of the church as we begin our worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in our gathering hymn number 327.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive, receive you whenever you appear. For we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1. Isaiah announces God's hatred of his people's hypocrisy. They have turned away from justice and forsaken the orphan, the widow, and the oppressed. Yet even now they are invited to turn back to God. The reading from Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is futile. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation. I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your new moons and your appointed festivals my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, Defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 50. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. Mark this then, who you forget God, or I will tear you apart, and there will be no one to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Amen. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Abraham and Sarah exemplify the vision of faith that people of God enact in every age. Their hope and trust in God's promise allowed them to face an unknown future and to receive the promise of God. The reading from Hebrews. 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised. And as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Jacob and Isaac, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Those who would follow the Master are called not to a life that is nonchalant or inattentive, but instead are to be ready to receive the Lord at any hour of the day, even at a moment's notice. The reading from St. Luke. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and where no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down and eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night, or near dawn, and finds them so. Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and Hadley, Isaac, do you guys want to come forward this morning for the children's sermon? Landon, how are you doing back there, buddy? Landon, do you want to come up for the children's sermon? All right. 
Thank you, Ms. Michelson. I'm going to have her put up the screen right now so that we can get ready for what's to come after the kids' sermon. Good morning. Good morning, Landon. Come on up. We're going to play a game this morning, okay? Now, big kids, I might need your help this morning, all right? Would you come stand with us, please? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, siblings, don't you love them, huh? Okay, that was really cute. You couldn't see it, but Hadley was sticking out her tongue at her big sister. <laughs> okay, guys, how many of you, I know all the big kids have, right? When we have a lock-in at the church, sometimes they turn out all the lights. And you know what they do when all the lights are out? They play a game of hide-and-seek, except you guys call it sardines, don't you? Isn't that what you call it, right? Have you ever played hide-and-seek? Yeah? Yeah? What do you think? Should we play hide-and-seek this morning? Should we do that? Okay. All right. Here's what we're going to do. How, tell me something. Before we play hide and seek, can, can you tell me how it is that we will play? What do we need to do so that we can play hide and seek? Right? We have to have people to hide, and we have to have somebody what? Somebody to be the, the finder, the seeker, right? And then when the people go, they run and hide, what do you do? The person who's going to be the finder, what do you do? Do you cover your eyes? Yes, right? Because you can't watch where they're going, right? Okay, so, so, Brooklyn, would you come here, please? All right, all right. Now, all of you are going to hide in just a moment, okay? But the first thing we need to do so that Brooklyn doesn't see where you're hiding, what is Brooklyn supposed to do? She has to cover her eyes, right? And then how much time should she give you to go and hide? The count to 10. Very good, Hadley. So, okay. So she's going to close her eyes and she's going to count to 10. And then, right before she starts to find you, what is she going to say? She's going to say, Ready or not. Have you guys played hide and seek before? go <laughs> okay you better close your eyes okay make sure she closed her eyes okay you guys too you got to find a place to hide okay but don't go too far okay okay all right let's have her count to 10 nice and loud One, two, go hide three, go hide now real loud Ready or not, here I come. Okay? Okay, now, in the interest of time, kids, where did all of you hide? Just raise your hand. <laughs> Behind the pulpit. Hey, good spot. And, and over, over by the flag. All right. And, oh, is there someone over here? Anyone behind? Anyone underneath the pews? Okay, come on back. Come on back, everybody. Come on back. We're almost done here this morning. Okay? Come on back. Okay? Oh, isn't that fun? All right. Now, remember, when we play hide-and-seek, okay, we have to have people to hide, and we have to have someone to go and find them, okay? And the finder, okay, it was Brooklyn, she would cover her eyes, and she counted to ten, and then she said, ready or not, here I come, right? Because she's going to come and find you, right? It's a lot of fun. It's kind of it's, it's a little bit, a little bit like what Jesus talks about today. He says, he says, you know what? You don't know when I'm going to try and come and find you. So be ready. Be watching for me. Okay? <laughs> be ready at any time. Yes. Right? So it's kind of like hide and seek. <laughs> and we know that because Jesus has so much love for you. Okay? When Jesus comes... He's going to take you up in his arms. He's going to catch you. And he's going to say, guess what? I have found you. Hmm? Isn't that pretty fun? Would you please fold your hands? And I'm going to say a prayer. Landon, you ready to pray? Fold your hands, kiddo. You can pray up there. That's fine. Just make sure you fold your hands back there, okay? Okay, let's pray. All right. Okay. Dear God, thank you for looking for us all the time. And thank you for sending your son Jesus to find us. And we know, O oh Lord, that he will come and take us to himself so that we can be one family together. 
We give you thanks for your love and that you seek us out. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. You can go back to your seats now. Okay. (laughs) Bye-bye. I haven't had that much fun in a children's sermon. Boy, I don't know. In a long, in a long, long time. I want to follow up uh, last week's uh, video um, or um, uh, uh, last week's uh, story, I should say, uh, with another baseball story today, okay? I told you last week, you know, pastor also has to be a little bit of a prophet. And last week I told you that, that while the twins were in first place, they were sure to go south before too long. Right? And, and they have. They are no longer in first place, but uh, I, think they are, I think they are maybe tied neck and neck with the Cleveland Indians. But here on the video screen this morning, you see a Detroit Tigers player. And um, last week we were talking about what it means a little bit to share and to be ready to give away your possessions at a moment's notice and uh, how a little boy shared a foul ball with me. I won't repeat the story. Uh, We don't have time for that right now. But uh, the little boy ended up with both a home run ball and a foul ball. And he said, here, mister, you take back the first one, the foul ball. Well, in that same spirit and, and in the spirit of sharing, by the way, I got home, and because I don't discuss my sermons with my wife ahead of time, I learned early on that that was not in my best interest, huh? We got home from church uh, last week, and my wife, my wife says to me, why didn't you tell me about that story? I could have given you this video to show you, for you to show the congregation. And I said, well, you know what? I'll use it next week. That's the perfect follow-on to tell you a little bit about what you're going to see. And I apologize. Because of some technical issues, um, it's going to take a moment in, in just a, a second here. It's going to take a moment for Kay Michelson to bring it live into, into the Twitter feed, right? You've heard of the president sending out tweets, right? Well, this is how the president does that, all right? People put things on Twitter. And this is a video that, uh, that the Detroit Tigers have put up onto Twitter. It's hard to see from your vantage point at the moment, but it'll be clear in just a second. And there's, there's some good audio with it, too. So I, wanna, I want to make sure that you, you listen closely for it. But you see, um, you can't hardly see him at all from where you're sitting right now. But maybe you can see the kid in the white t-shirt up here, okay? Just alongside uh, that that boy, that's a friend of my wife's. It's, uh, it's, uh, that's right. Um, That's her children, okay? So they live in Detroit, Michigan. And where the cursor is right now, if you can see the cursor, thank you very much, Kay. That is a kid who's going to be catching a, catching a ball that the Detroit Tigers right fielder, Mr. Goodrum, has caught, and he's pitched the ball up into the stadium. And you'll see in a minute that, that the kid in the green shirt uh, is sharing this baseball with another little kid. You can hardly see him in the video here, but he's right there. Another little kid in a gray tiger's shirt, okay? So without any further ado, let's go ahead and, and uh, Kay, go ahead and pull this up, and we'll watch it a little bit. It's going to loop three or four times, okay? Remember, I want you to watch for the kid and also watch for the girlfriend, the girlfriend of the gentleman in the back. Thank you, Ms. Michelson. That is why it is said that baseball is not only America's pastime, but also God's 
favorite sport? Hmm? God's favorite sport. Because there, without any hesitation, though he had a prized possession in his hands, hmm? probably once in a lifetime moment where the kid in the green shirt catches this ball, tossed to him by the right fielder, without any hesitation at all, hands it over to this little kid. But do you see what comes from that one moment of generosity? From that singular moment of sharing? Not only does this little boy receive a gift beyond any measure, how could he ever purchase something like that at all? Not only does this little boy receive this show of kindness and affection and love from, from this great big kid that he must look up to, but as you look around the crowd, what do you see? You see a grandpa clapping his hands and saying, give him a hug. You see another gentleman sitting there saying, hey, good job, kid, give me knuckles. Right? And you couldn't see it so well. But you may have noticed the girlfriend and her boyfriend who are there, the gentleman in the blue. Well, you can't see the gentleman anymore, but you can still see the girlfriend on the right-hand side of the screen. And though the projection is a little bit dim, you might notice that she has her mouth open, for she is astonished. She is taken aback that this little boy would be so generous her own boyfriend was hoping to catch it for himself. And what happens? This teenage boy catches it and gives it away. And she says, oh, look at that. You see, this is why Jesus says to us, be dressed and ready for action. So that no matter where you are or what hour of the day it might be, your actions, your words, your decisions, and your choices may be an inspiration not just to those who receive your goodwill, but also to all around, that they too may see your good work and give glory to your Father in heaven, for it is not just those two boys who are built up in the spirit of love and generosity and sharing, but it is all of, of those people sitting around them. This is why Jesus says to us, you also must be ready so that when the groom comes and knocks at the door, you may open the doors without hesitation to the bridegroom and welcome him in. The Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. So build up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven. Give away your most valued possessions. And I dare say for that boy in the green Michigan State University sweatshirt, what might be more treasured than that baseball? Jesus' call to us, dear friends, is the very same call that he gave to Father Abraham and Mother Sarah, that in faith we would set out for a place that we had been promised but not yet able to see with our earthly eyes and not seeing, we find that faith is not easy. I suppose we might say it's simple, but it's certainly not easy. It is a difficult thing to give away those things which are nearest and closest to our hearts. But Jesus promises also, where you put your treasure, that is where your heart will be. Where you put your treasure, that is where your heart will be. So, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. God will be faithful. Give of your first fruits, not the leftovers or the remainder. Trust that the Lord will provide. And test him. Read the Bible. <laughs> Find an example for me of an instance where he is not. I double dog dare you. Can't be done. Because God never has failed his people. He has never abandoned his children. And though our faith 
sometimes might be strong and other times weak, if we can turn to our sisters and brothers in Christ, we will see and we will remember that God has never left us alone. Peace be with you, sisters and brothers in Christ. And may you go out into the world ready to catch a fly ball. Amen. Let's rise and join our voices together in singing hymn number 764, Have No Fear, Little Flock. You will find the confession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed printed at the back of your hymnal. Together with one voice, let us confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. Let us join our hearts in prayer for all of God's people in this place and for all the world over in their hour of need. O Lord, our God, we ask that you pour out upon us the faith of Abraham and Sarah, that we would follow where you would lead, and that by your strength and encouragement, our lives may be a light to all the world, and that seeing Jesus Christ, all may come to faith and hope and trust. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, we ask that you assuage the grief of those who mourn the passing of their loved ones. Remind all, dear Heavenly Father, that the day shall come when all shall be raised in Christ, when every knee shall bend and every tongue confess that he is Lord, and that when that great heavenly banquet is set before us, we shall rejoice that you have brought in the fullness of your kingdom. Until that day, O oh Lord, give comfort, hope, and encouragement to all who mourn the passing of loved ones. Especially we pray for all the family of Vern Rankin, for the family of Kyle Beach, and for the family of Virginia Brangwen. O Lord, let the light of your Son shine brightly upon them. 
Lord, in your mercy. Give strength and encouragement and health and life and peace to all those we bring before you now and pour out your spirit upon Dorothy, Xander, Karen, and Merrill. Stay close to the side, O Lord, of Diane, Robin, Marlis, and Walker. We lift up to your care, Alex, Cade, Mel, and also those whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks that you have washed us clean and removed all of our sins and made us white as snow, O Lord, that we would stand before you in righteousness and that we would embrace all around us in love. We thank you for these blessings that you pour out upon little Graham Michael Starr. In his baptism, O Lord, strengthen him and lead him all the days of his life. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands then, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to rise and share the peace of the Lord. With thankfulness and praise, let us offer our gifts to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then our Lord, together let us pray as he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If you belong to Christ, then what is here belongs to you. So come, for all things have been prepared. Please be seated.
And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ and made us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is God of Grace and God of Glory, number 705. Please be seated for just a minute or two while I highlight a few announcements. Don't forget you are invited to stick around immediately after service for coffee and some wonderful donuts. We thank the InReach Committee for all they've done in pulling this together this morning. And again, welcome to Ms. Renee Behrens. Renee, wave your hand for a second. We're going to try to get her out the door so she can shake your hands uh, right as soon as we're done with announcements. So welcome, Renee and Brian. Uh, we're glad to have you here with us at St. John's. The window highlight this morning is an important one. It is the very story of Hebrews chapter 11 from the second lesson today. You'll see that this is Father Abraham. It's the window in the far southeast corner of, pardon me, southwest corner of the narthex. You can look at it on your way out. But there's two important highlights to take note of. The first is that Abraham is looking off at this palm tree and mountains in the distance as though he were looking backward at a dream. He had opportunity to return to his homeland from which God had called him, and yet he des desired a better country, a city with foundations not built by our hands, but by God's hands. And so rather than casting his gaze homeward, you can see that he is standing in the midst of God's kingdom and the city whose foundations the Lord has made. Some very interesting work and very helpful work for our faith that our forefathers and mothers here accomplished at St. John's. 
If you're visiting today, welcome. Please grab one of the gift bags on your way home. And again, congratulations. Welcome to uh, Graham Michael Starr, our new brother in faith, son of Sean and Sarah Starr. And so we welcome him and his baptism. What a cute kid, huh? Will your hair do that? And again, welcome to Ms. Behrens and her husband, Brian. Stick around. Oh, don't forget to come back for brunch. It's going to be following the late service. You don't have to bring anything. It's not a potluck. Just bring yourselves and make sure that you come hungry, Louine. Okay? Very good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I don't want to skip past that slide. Bishop Lorna Hollis is going to be installed this coming Saturday, the 17th, at 1.30 at First Lutheran Church. And so you are invited to join in this great celebration as she takes up uh, the charge of her office. And again, that's just right down in Sioux City. Uh, Mike has is, is been invited to be the principal organist and musician for the celebration. So congratulations, Mr. Rathke. Uh, amen. Huh? He's moving up in the world and pretty quickly too, it seems. Huh? How about that? Don't forget, it is time to register for Sunday school, and we're just looking for a teacher or two, so please talk with Nancy Eisebrand this week if you can help in any way, shape, or form, and you can register your kids, you can register any kid for that matter, online. Finally, we are, of course, finishing up collecting for uh, Lutheran World Relief for the school kids. I was told this week that they've already collected enough for 150 school kits. Last week I told you 100, so just in a week's time it's already doubled almost, or at least half again as much. And so we thank you for your generosity. Those collections will continue through October 1st, and you'll find the receptacle for those donations out in the narthex. With that, Kay, would you please advance to the benediction slide, and would the congregation please rise. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.